welcome back to day 23 let's get started with a bible verse for there is one god and one mediator between god and mankind the man christ jesus who gave himself a ransom gave himself as a ransom for all people this how i'm sorry I can't read today. <laughs> this has now been witnessed to all to at the proper time. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me today. I don't know why I can't read. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. <laughs> My bad, y'all. <laughs> but today's topic is faith. Um often followers of God put on this front like they have to be perfect all the time just because they're saved um, nobody is perfect in this world and even after you're saved you still won't be perfect um, Having God in your life will help you make better decisions. Um, he will help you overcome your weaknesses and turn them into strength. But doesn't mean you won't have moments of weaknesses. Moments that you might stumble. Um... This flesh, it is weak. And no matter how much you want to be strong all the time, how much you want to be perfect all the time, this flesh will not allow you to be that all the time. Um, my faith is growing. Um... God has got me out of a lot of tough situations. Um, he's been there for me when I had nobody to turn to. It's just me and him. And because of that, I have faith now more you know, growing up in a church, stuff becomes like, you know, I don't want to say a rhythm, but kind of like, you know, I can't think of the word right now, <laughs> but a routine. That's what I'm trying to think of, a routine. Thank you, God, for bringing it back to me. Um, things become a routine. You just go because you feel like you have to go. And and a lot of times it seems like the pastors say it, stuff over and over. People react the same way every Sunday. It seems staged. Don't seem real. It's not with every pastor. Some pastors can really move people. Maybe they was the ones that was called. As they say, all pastors are not called. Just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you was called to do that. So, I don't know. It, well, at my church, my old church, the one I grew up in, stuff felt staged. And I was just going because that's what we did as a family. We went to church every Sunday. I didn't, I don't feel like I was starting to really learn anything until I became an adult. And I got out here in the world. And that's what 
Devon talks about in that success book that I'm reading that you don't actually know God until you get out here in the world. You can be in church every Sunday, know that Bible back and forth. But until you get out here in the world and you actually able to implement the stuff that you're learning, you don't really know God and his strength. And when I first left home at 21, 21, yeah, um, I left like a month before my 22nd birthday, but yeah, when I was 21, I left home for the first time out here in the real world by myself. <laughs> God was with me, cause I should have been dead. Somebody tried to drug me. But thank God, he was with me. And I happened to be able to get away. And I kind of just went and parked my car somewhere in a public place. You know, locked my doors and slept the drug off. Um... Who knows what would have happened to me if that drug would have, I don't know, something was like, it was God, he was there with me. I could see, maybe that dude wasn't, I don't know if it was his first time trying to Mickey a girl or what, but I can tell that he was trying to do something suspicious. He wasn't acting normal. He kept trying to offer me a drink, and I was like, no, I'm good, I'm good. He's like, you don't want no soda, no, 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 no. I was like, no, I'm good. And then he just kept bothering me, so I was like, I'll take some water. So, I don't know if it was in the water or the blunt. I can tell you, I never smoked an already blunt after that. Because that was also weird. He was like, I already smoked some, you can smoke the rest. And I was just like, that's the only reason why I came over here. Because you said we was going to chill, talk, and smoke together. But you talking about you already smoked. And smoked a blunt by myself. So... I took a sip of the water, took two puffs of the blunt, and I was just like, my tongue started feeling numb. So I called my friend at the time, my best friend at the time, and I was like, what was it like when you got Mickey? He told me that his tongue was feeling numb, and then... Like, a little while afterwards, he went, he blacked out. So, my tongue was already feeling numb. So, I went upstairs, and I went to the, I was like, where's your bathroom? Went in the bathroom, started panicking, because I saw he had invited this dyke over. And I was like, do they think they about to... Run some trying to train on me or something. I ain't know what was going on. So I had my pit bull with me. He was scared of dogs. So that also worked in my favor. <laughs> my pit bull went everywhere with me because I didn't know nobody in Ohio. So if I was going to somebody's house, he was coming with me. So because I had my dog with me, I believe. God and the and the dog saved my life. I was able to get out of there, and I just went to a gas station and tried to eat something to see if it would work, but that didn't work. I ended up passing out instantly, and it was just black. It was like 
And the next morning when I woke up, everything was like, it was like unreal. Like it really happened. It didn't really happen. Couldn't really remember nothing. So I just thought to myself, imagine if he wouldn't have let me leave the house. I would have woke up not knowing what happened to me. Because that was, at that time, I don't know if it's still going on, but at that time, a, a lot of girls was getting mickeyed. And, um, basically getting raped. And some was dying because the dude would put too much drug in and, you know... They just throw their body in a dumpster in the back of the building somewhere. And I'm thinking that could have been me because I'm just out here in this state by myself not knowing nobody and just going off with people and just going to people's house. Like, what is wrong with you? But... I think deep down, down inside, I didn't care about my life. I really don't think I care. And I believe that's why God blessed me with a child. He's like, you need to sit your butt down because <laughs> you're doing too much. You keep putting yourself in situations to get yourself messed up. So... She definitely sent me down. I don't never leave the house unless it's to go work or something. Like, boy, somebody is blowing my phone up. Jeez. Like, my bad, y'all. <laughs> Let me put this mug on mute because it's my cousin. I don't know why he's blowing my phone up like this, but... That's distracting. Yeah, so I'm telling you, he helped me out of dangerous situations, helped me out of being homeless. Like, times when I didn't have money, the money just appeared. <laughs> it appeared. And, you know, when, when they say not on your time, but his time. Ooh, it was like, I was like, ooh, Jesus, you, you Lord, God, <laughs> you cutting it real close. Like, I need the money <laughs> tomorrow. And then, like, 11.59, before, you know, one minute before tomorrow, I had that money. And my faith has been growing. But I can say, even though I trust him, and no matter what he tells me, I just do it. Even though I be scared, I'm like, he be like, you got to leave this person right now. They don't appreciate you. But I'll bring them back to you. I be like, you sure, Lord? <laughs> Like, okay. Or, he'd be like, I just want you to sit down, stay in the house for a little bit. But I'm going to make sure your bills get paid. <laughs> I'm like, Lord. But the bills was paid. I had food. Bills was paid, all of them. So I'm sitting here, I'm talking to y'all, um, trying to force myself to focus and do more sewing and to focus on my homework. I had to take a break from my homework because it was like I couldn't focus, so I had to take a, a little break. So when I go back, I can 
just go ahead and finish up. I only got to do like a little PowerPoint because this is the last week for these two classes that I'm taking. International business and um, business management. And then next week I start nutrition and business law. But I'm just trying to finish it up so I can be done with these two classes. Um, but this little PowerPoint, I don't know, it's, it's super easy, but for some reason I can, I just cannot focus today and it's due tomorrow. So <laughs> procrastination, I tell you, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, but my faith been growing. God has really had my back. As long as I do what he tells me to do, he has my back every time. But this last thing that he told me. I know he's right, but for some reason, I'm struggling with my faith with it because it's like after you and been to like over 20 doctors, you got everybody calling you crazy, like literally from... The people that say they believe in God, that tells you anything is possible. Those people, to the people that say they love you, that will catch you, they'll never let you fall. Always have your back. And everybody in between those people calling you crazy. It got me over here like, Lord, like, you telling me this, but <laughs> when you when you go, you know, do your miracle or something, reveal it or something so these people can see that I'm not crazy. It's like, how how much longer do I have to wait? I feel like I'm waiting this long slightly because of punishment because I broke a promise. <laughs> so it's like a blessing and a punishment at the same time. <laughs> but it's scary. It's, it is hard. It's been hard trying to keep my faith in this situation that I'm in and what God has told me. Yeah. I wonder how many other people struggle with their faith. They pray, and they feel like their prayer is not being answered. They tell God they believe, but they feel like God don't have their back. Sometimes I wonder... Is the prayers not being answered because our faith is not strong enough? That we're not believing enough for the power to work? Is that what's in my case? I know he say all you need is Faith of a mustard seed, which is really little. But sometimes I feel like, haven't I proved that I've had that, at least that much faith, if not more? And I'm still here waiting 
forgot to show his hand to show what he told me to heal me. It's not fun being a crazy lady, I tell you. Sometimes I wonder, do people only call people crazy? Not because they're actually crazy, but because they just don't understand. When I was in the shelter, when I first moved up here and was um, working and saving to get this apartment so I can bring Malia up. It was a dude in the shelter that everybody labeled as crazy. They said he went to jail and then he didn't come back the same. But when he talked, he to everybody else it sound like gibberish. But when I listened to him, I heard <laughs> I heard more than gibberish. One time I heard him say my enemies won't even know I'm coming. Because they're going to be too busy being drunk and high. He was saying some other stuff. But that little verse right there, I heard that real clear. I was like, hmm. Is that a message to me? That I need to stop smoking? Even though I used to be a real bad smoker. I'm not even going to lie. Like... I first started smoking when I was 19 and up until like I had Malia, I was a chain smoker like I had to stay high all day like from the time I woke up to the time I went to sleep. I just wanted to be smoking all day. But after I had her, it was kind of like I only smoked when I was going through like stressful situations. Plus, I always had a job where I had to be clean anyway. So. <laughs> I really didn't smoke like that, but every now and then when times got tough, I would smoke. So I was kind of like, I went from like chain smoking to a occasional smoker. Now I just haven't been smoking because I promised her. Even though sometimes I'd be like, Ugh. I really don't like drinking, but I do like to smoke. I don't know. It calms me. It numbs my feelings of fear, of whatever I'm feeling. If I'm feeling scared, if I'm feeling like sad, mad, I just, I'm numb all the way. I like that feeling of being numb, but feelings is what make us human, right? But sometimes feelings can get in the way. Sometimes it can. 
And it's like, I believe my feelings is getting in the way of my faith. Because I'm low-key scared of being wrong. What if I am wrong? What if I'm not? I don't know. Nobody won't even listen to me or even try. Just try. <laughs> try to investigate. So it has my faith uneasy. Me, as the person I know I am, I don't like gray areas. I don't like it at all. I always need to know. <laughs> and that's, that has been a hard, oops, sorry, my back hurt. A hard issue for me, I guess I can say, with following God. Because sometimes there are gray areas, like in between the blessings or in between the transitionings. It's like, it's quiet, which leads confusion, leaves the mind to wonder and to panic and to let the devil sink in and try to mess with your head. And I do not like gray areas. I always like to know. But with God, you can't always know. <laughs> but sometimes you'll mess it up before he get finished. So, this gray area that I'm in right now has been messing me up. The only response I get is just a little bit longer. <laughs> you be like, how much longer? <laughs> like, how much longer? Am I gonna have to just sit around and wait? Have this faith that everything you show me will come to pass. I feel like faith is the hardest part about following God. Honestly, because God can give you whatever the devil promised you. It might take longer because he building you a stronger foundation. He making it last forever. Unlike the devil, when he give it to you, he give it to you knowing that you're not ready. So that you can mess it up. So that you can keep coming back to him. Selling a piece of yourself. More and more until he have your whole soul. That's how he trick you. He give you stuff knowing that you're not ready. But God waits and prepares you. And give it to you when you're ready. So you won't mess it up. So that you can have it forever. But nobody has the patience or the faith to wait around for their blessings. That they end up messing it up. They let the devil get into their head. And talk them out of their blessings. Oh man. My battery trying to die on me, you guys. <laughs>
<laughs> That's my time anyway. I only got like five seconds left. <laughs> I'm telling you, that devil, he don't want me to talk to y'all. Because my battery was all the way full when I started. And then 30 minutes, it just and went dead. But it's probably about to cut off on me any second. So let me go ahead and say... I love y'all. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Keep y'all faith. It's worth it. Stick on the path. It's worth it. It's going to come through for you. It will. Stay strong. I love you. Let's continue to grow together. See y'all tomorrow for the next topic. This has been 30 and 30 with Nikki. Peace.